in terms of fact, the first we're going to talk about is what's called the GCF. Do you remember what the GCF stands for? Greatest common factor. That's what the GCF stands for. Greatest common factor. So notice in those three words, we have the word factor, we have common factor, we have the greatest. Those three words each distinctly mean something. So first of all, let's talk about the word factor. So if I look at the number 8, 8, do you all agree that I can write 8 as 4 times 2? Yeah. So, so I wrote 8 as a product. So this product means that 4 is a factor of 8, 2 is a factor of 8, okay? I can also write 8 as 8 times 1, couldn't I? So that also means that 8 is a factor of 8. One is a factor of eight. All right. So whenever you talk about factors, and you're going to see this as we go through through uh, this whole chapter, <coughs> we're going to talk about we're going to use the word. What are the factors of this expression? What are the factors of this trinomial? So when you talk about factoring, when you talk about factoring, you think factors, and so you're going to think a product. So eight is four times two, right? That means 4 is a factor, and what else is a factor? 2. 8 is 8 times 1. That means 8 is a factor, and what else is a factor? 1. Okay, so that means my factor. Let's get this now. Suppose I have 12 and 16. 12 and 16. I'm looking at 12 and 16. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and list the factors of 12. Factors of 12. What's the smallest factor of 12? Uh-uh. One. One. Because 12 is 1 times 12, right? Let's go in order. Is 2 a factor of 12? Yes, because two, 12 is 2 times 6. So that also means that what else is a factor of 12? 6. Y'all agree? Okay. And, I'll, and I can put 12 as well, right? Let's go to 3. Is 3 a factor of 12? Yes, yes because I can write 3 as 3 times what? So 4 is also a factor of 12, right? And I think that's about it, right? Oh, 6. Thank you. 6. Is, well, let's do 5. Is 5 a factor of 12? No. no. Is 6 a factor of 12? Yes, yes but I haven't listed I think that's all of them, is that correct? Yeah. I've listed them all. So how many factors of 12 are there? Five. There are five of them. Y'all agree? Uh, One, two, three, four, five, six of them. Y'all agree? Yeah. All right. What are the factors of 16? One, two. One, two. Let, let, well, let's do 1 times 16. So it'll be 16 as well, right? Yeah. 2 times 16. 8, 3 is not, 4 is, 4 times 4, you only list it once, 5 is not, 6 is not, 7, and that's it, because 8, we already have it listed. So how many factors of 16 are there? 5. Okay. So you understand what factors are? All right. Now let's talk about common factors. Look at 12 and 16. Is 1 a common factor? Yes. Is 2 a common factor? Yes. yes. Is 6 a common factor? No. Oh, that's 16. I'm so sorry. Thank you. It, I, I thought this was a comma. So, no, right? Right. All right. Is 4 a common factor? Yes. Is that it? So, how many common factors are there? Um, no, I, 3. I, I thought that was a 6. It looked like a it's 16. Three, right? Okay. So you know what common factors are. Now let's talk about greatest common factor. Of all those three common factors, which one is the greatest? Four. Four. So the GCF of 12 
and 16 is what? Four. Four. Okay, so now you know what a greatest common factor is. So when you talk about greatest common factor, you're talking about two or more numbers. So, you, so when you talk about greatest common factor, you first of all need to know what the factors are, which ones they have in common, and whatever ones they have in common, the greatest one, the greatest G, the GCF will be the largest one. Okay? All right, now let's look at this idea. So, let's look at problem number one. Find the GCF of 40 and 48. 40 and 48. Now, there are a couple ways to do this. One way is to do what we just did. But sometimes the numbers, the numbers get, get uh, um, pretty big. But most of the time, though, with the problems that you're going to see, the GCF of the numbers are going to be pretty easy to deal with. So I'm going to show you two ways to do this. The first way we're going to do it is the way we just did it. So let's talk about the, the, the factors of 40. So let's find the factors of 40. R, 1 and 40. What else? 2 and what? 20. 3 is not. 4 is. 4 and what? 10. 5 and 8. Anything else? I think we already got them, right? Okay, so I think that's it. So those are the factors of 40. Let's do 48. Factors of 48. Or 1 and what? 48. 2 and what? 24. 3, use your calculator to say 48 divided by 3. Is it 16? Is that right? Okay, no? 48 divided by 3. 16. Alright. Is 4 a factor? All you got to do is just say 48 divided by 4, is it? Well, yeah. yeah. 4 and 12? Alright, 5 definitely is not. What about 6? 48 divided by 6. Okay, so 6 and 8, y'all agree? Uh, and guys, all you got to do is go halfway. Just go halfway to 24. That's all you got to do. So we got what? Uh, 8, 9's not, 10's not, 11's not, 12, we already have it listed, 13's not, 14's not, 15's not, 16, we already have it listed, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24, we have it listed. So that's it. You just go halfway. That's all you got to do. Now, you see some common ones, right? right. Which one's the greatest? Eight. eight. So eight's the greatest, is that correct? Mm -hmm. So eight's the greatest. So the GCF of 40 and 48 is what? Eight. Okay. That's going to be important when we start factoring polynomials. You got to know how to find the GCF of numbers. Let me show you another way. Okay, listen carefully. Listen carefully to this. This idea is going to help you with bigger numbers. So you may remember in a previous course, and you did this in a previous course, you talked about the factor tree. So you, remember, you may remember this, the factor tree. Okay, factor tree. So basically what you did was this. Listen carefully. So you, 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 you kind of broke this down as branches of a tree. And so you just thought to yourself, all right, what two numbers times, its, times not necessarily itself, but give me the project of two numbers that is 40. Two times 10. Two times 10 is 20. Two times 20. 20, or someone could have said 10 times 4. It does not matter, right? does not matter. does not matter at all. In the end, everybody had the same thing. So I'm going to say 10 times 4. Now you ask yourself, 
Is 10 a prime number? No. No. 10 is not a prime number. So you got to remember what a prime number is now. So a prime number is a number whose factors are one and itself. No other. So for example, is 2 a prime number? Yes or no? Yes. What are the factors of 2? 1 and 2. Is 3 a prime number? Yes. What are the factors of 3? 1 and 3. Is 4 a prime number? No. Because the factors of 4 are 1, 2, and 4. In fact, what's, this, what's the only even number that's prime? 2. All the other prime numbers are odd. Is 5 a prime number? Yes. Because what are the factors of 5? 1 and 5. Is 7 a prime number? Yes. Is 9 a prime number? No. The factors of 9 are 1, 9, and what else? 3. What's the next prime number? 11. Next one? 13. Next one? Uh-uh. 15. 3 goes into 15. 17. 19. 23. 29, and so on. 31 would be 1. What would you say? 27 is not prime because 9 goes into 27. Okay? So the smallest prime number is 2, and then from there. So is 10 a prime number? No. Is 4 a prime number? Nope. So now what you're going to do is you're going to break this down further. You're going to break this down further. So 10, I can write as what, though? The, there's only two ways I can write, uh, there's only one way I can write 10, one, one product, actually two, 10 times one, but let's not use 10 times one. Two times what? Five. five. And what do you remember about two and five? Prime. They're prime. So you circle those. You, you circle those to remind you that I don't go any further with that branch. That branch <laughs> stops. Okay. Now let's look at 4. I can write 4 as what? And are those prime? Notice every branch is circled, so I'm done. Now what that means is this. Now listen carefully. That means that, that 40 is a product of those numbers right here. And it kind of makes sense because use your calculator. What's 2 times 5? What's 10 times 2? And what's 20 times 2? That's what it is. And notice that every, and by the way, if it's not prime, do you remember what it's called? Composite, very good. So if it's not a prime number, it's called a composite number. So 40 is a composite number. Every composite number can be written as a product of prime numbers. So I can write 40 as 2 times 2 times 2 times what? 5. And remember, 2 times 2 times 2 is the same thing as 2 to what power? Third times 5. Okay? Now, you may say, well, I prefer that other way. Yeah. In some cases, the other way is, is a lot quicker. You know where you just list the factors? It is a lot quicker for that one. But when the numbers get big, the factor tree is going to be important. All right, so that's 40. Now, let's look at, um, what was the other one? 48? All right, let's do 48. All I need is just two numbers. Don't use 48 and 1. Two, okay, you want to use 2 and 24? That's fine. I can circle one right away. Which one can I circle? The 2. I can circle the 2. 24 I can't circle because 24 is not prime. But give me two numbers I can multiply together to get 24. 2 and 12, someone else could have said what? 3 and... 8, 4, and 6 does not matter. Does not matter at all. So you said 2 and 12? 
Which one can I circle? The two. The two. All right, is 12 prime? No. Nope, I can go further with it. Three and four? I can circle which one? Three. Three. And four I can write as two and two. And I can't go any further because every branch is circled. So 48. 48. I can write as two. And let's put it in order. Two. And how many twos are there? Factors of twos. One, two, four, right? So you agree that's two to the fourth? Times what? Three. Okay. So that's what I have. All right. So, so right away, so far, you just got to make sure you know how to use the factor tree. We're going to do another one. We're going to do the factor tree again. But the factor tree is just a process of writing a number, a composite number, as a product of what kind of numbers? Prime. That's all that is. Okay. Now, listen carefully. Remember, the greatest common factor in the phrase greatest common factor is common factors, right? Okay, so I'm going to write 40 and 48 again. And 40 is 2 to the third times 5. Y'all agree? And 48 is 2 to the fourth times 3. Okay? All right. Now, look when, when, when I wrote 40, y'all y'all agree it was 2 times 2 times 2 times 5, right? Right. And when I wrote 48, y'all agree? Let me go ahead and do this. 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. 2 times 2 times 2 times, oops, times 2 times 5. Times 3. Oh, 3. Thank you. All right. So, look at all the factors. I'm going to circle what they have in common. I can circle these. I'm going to circle these. I'm going to circle these. Do you have anything else in common? No. no. This right here, what they have in common is 2. What they have in common here is what? 2. What they have in common here is what? Well, what's 2 times 2 times 2? And in that the GCF? That's the GCF. So, so basically what I did was, was I wrote the factors, 2 times 2 times 2, and they're all prime factors, right? And I circled what they had in common. I didn't circle the 5. Why didn't I circle the 5? Because the other one doesn't have a 5. I didn't circle the 3 because the other one have a 3. I didn't circle this 2 because the other one didn't have an extra 2. You circled only those that they had in common. And then I multiplied those common <coughs> factors. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And what was the GCF? GCF was 8. The other thing I want you to recognize this, and it's going to be important when we do the variables, because we're about to do some with the variables instead. I want you to notice this. You see how I circled the twos because that's what they had in common? You see the base right here? The base is two. This base is two. How many things did I circle? Three. three. This exponent is three. three. This exponent is four. four. You're going to circle, remember, think common. I have how many twos here? Three. three. How many twos here? Four. four. How many do you have in common? Three. three. So you're going to circle the one with the smallest exponent. So I'm going to come back to that idea when we do the variables. When we do the variables, you're going to see how that's going to work out. All right, so keep that in mind about the smallest exponent. Now let's look at another one. All right, let's do the factor tree with the next one. Because I, I know you can all do the list, but I need you to do the factor tree. Number two, 60 and 84. In fact, I would not want to do the list here. It's a lot quicker, it's a lot quicker in this particular case to use the factor tree. And again, I want to find the GCF. Now the ones on, when we do the polynomials as we go through this particular chapter, when we factor, the numbers, the, the numbers are not going to be that big. 
But on your test though, on your test, you are gonna see an example like that because I need to see if you can do the factor tree on your test. So, 60, let's do 60. 60, think of two numbers whose product is 60. Two and 30. Two and 30, okay. Someone else could have said five and what? Five and 12, someone else could have said 10 and what? Six does not matter, does not matter at all. So two and 30, which one can I circle? Two. Two. Is 30 prime? Nope. Three and 10. Three and 10, okay. I can circle which one? Three. Three. 10 I cannot circle because it's not prime, but I can write as two and five, and I'm done. I'm done for 60, because 60 is two to what power? Second times what? Three, three times, times what? Five. Five. So remember, every composite number can be written as a product of what kind of numbers? Prime. And notice, two is prime, three is prime, five is prime. Let's look at 84. Let's do the factor tree. <clears throat> it looks like you always want to start with the smallest prime number that goes into it. So two and what? 42. 42. Circle two. 42 is what? 2 and 21. 2 and 21. You can use 7 and 6. Go ahead and use 7 and 6. Go ahead and do that and, and you'll see you'll get the same thing at the end. Use 7 and 6. 21 is what? 7 Okay. And I'm done. So when you use the seven and six, you should have gotten the same thing. So 84 is two to what power? Three second. second times what? Seven. Three times what? Three. Seven. Okay. Now, I'm gonna put them under each other because it helps. You don't have to, but it helps. So here's 60 and here's 84. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, the common factors on each other. So what's what I'm doing? 2 to the second times 3, and then I'm going to say times 7. I didn't put the 7 under the 5. You, you didn't matter. You could have. But I wanted to start circling some things. You'll see I line my common bases. Mm -hmm. So that means I can circle this, and I can circle what else? 3. 3. Look at that first thing I have circled. What do you notice about the exponents? They're the same. So I can automatically use 2 to what power? Second. So that means 2 times 2, right? And then what else can I use? 3. No, that's 3 squared because I don't see a 3 squared. I see 3 to the first power. So just 3, right? And that's all I can use. Because I can't use a 5 because you don't see a 5 here. I can't use a 7 because you only see a 7 here. Remember, common factors. What do they have in common? Do both 60 and 84 have a 5 in common? No. no. Do they have a 7 in common? No. They have a 2 in common. This has how many factors of 2? Two? 2. How many factors of 2 here? 2. So they have how many factors of 2 in common? 2. How many factors of 3 are in this one? 1. How many factors of 3 in this one? 1. How many factors they have in common? 1. What's 2 times 2? Four. 4 times 3. GCF is 12. That's the largest common factor. That's the largest factor they have in common. All right, let's do number 3 now. So look at number 3. So you're, you're, now there are going to be, in this particular section of my math lab and also on the worksheet, where, see how numbers 1 and 2, there were two numbers? Number three is going to be three numbers, 44, 64, and I think that's 100. So 44, 64, and 100. I want to find the GCF. Okay, find GCF. All right, well, it makes things a lot easier if you use a factor tree. Let's start with 44. All right, factor tree. You know what to do now. What are you going to do? 
22 and 22, I can circle which one? Why can I circle the 2? Because it's prime. Good. Next one? 2 and 11. And I can circle both of them and I'm done. 44 is 2 to what power? 2 to the second times 11, right? Okay. Now let's do 64. Two and what? 32. Okay, I can circle which one? 2. 32 is 216. I can circle which one? 2. 16 is 2 and 8. Someone else could have said uh, 4 times 4, right? Does not matter. And 8 is what? 2 and 4. 2 and 4. And 4 is what? 2 and 2. Huh. So... So 64, all you see is a fa are factors of what number? 2. So I'm going to put them under here. So 64 is 2 to what power? 6. 6? Six? All right, that's it. Just 2 to the 6. All right, let's do 100. You want to do 50 and 2? Okay. I can circle which one? 50? 2 times 25? I can circle which one? Two. Two. 25? Five, five. five and five. I can circle which ones? Both. Both. Five. So 100 is 2 to the second times 5 to the second. And, and I just spaced it out so that way the 11 and the 5s were not under each other. So it looks like the only the only factors they have in common is which factor two. Okay? That's it. Just the factor of two. But then you gotta ask yourself, I got how many do I need? Well, how many factors of two are in this one? Two, good. How many factors of two in this one? Six. How many factors of two in this one? Two. two. What's the commonality? Two. Two of them. So remember, use the one with the smallest exponent. So my GCF is what? Is 4. GCF is 4. Okay. So we're, we're um, as we go through the process, we'll go over this again, but it's not, if you didn't get most of it, at, or hopefully you got most of it, but there's still a little bit of something you don't quite understand, you'll probably, you'll, you will at some point. Okay, now keep in mind what I said, though. We use the one with what exponent? Smallest, Smallest because it makes sense. It makes sense, because look, 44 is 2 times 2 times 11, right? 64 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. I need one more? Okay. 100 is 2 times 2 times... 5 times 5. I'm going to circle the commonalities. I can circle those three here. I can circle those three here. And that is it. Why can't I circle 11? There's not 11 here and there's not 11 here. It's got to be, if I circle, it's got to be in all three, right? Why can't I circle the 5? It's not in the others. Why can't I circle the 2 here? Because I don't have any more 2's to circle. So my GCF is 2 times what? 2, which is 4. Okay? All right, now, use that idea with this now. And I think you can do this. Number 4. Y squared, Y to the 4th, Y to the 5th. I know y'all can tell with the GCF of those three expressions. Y squared. Y squared. How many factors of y are in that first one? Two. Two. How many factors of y in the second one? Four. Four. How many factors of y in the third one? Five. Five. What do they, how many do they have in common? Two. Two. The one with which exponent? The smallest. Kind of makes sense because if you, if, and you really don't want to do this because you don't have time to do this, but if you look at this as y times y, and then y to the fourth as y times y times y times y. 
and y to the fifth as y times y times y times y times y. I can circle these. I can circle these. I can't do anything else. You may say, well, why can't I circle these two right here? Because how many, how many um, terms did you have all together? Three. Well, you better have some more y's here. And you don't. So this is going to be y times y. The GCF is going to be y times y, which is y. But the point being that, that when you deal with the variables, you don't want to do this. You don't have time to do this. Now you see that when I'm dealing with variable expressions, that I use the 1, the G7 is going to be the 1, with the smallest exponent. All right, now, number 5. Write those three expressions down. You have x squared y cubed, x y to the fourth, x to the fourth y squared. So before we can go any further into the other sections, you got to know how to find the GCF of those three things. Okay, now remember, when finding GCF, in, the, in that phrase, GCF is the word common. Look at those three things, those three terms. Do I have X's in all of them? Yeah. Yes. So my GCF has to have an X in it. It has to have a factor of x. The question I'm going to ask you is, how many do I need? One. Someone said one, someone said three. The person that said three, tell me why you said three. Uh, that's not what we did here. When, when, we did, when we did this right here, we said that we needed two factors of two. Why didn't you say, um, why didn't you say three? Okay, someone else said one. So I had two ones and one three. Obviously, the three is not correct. <laughs> Anybody else? All right, well, let's think about this. We use the one with the smallest exponent. What's this exponent right here? What's this exponent right here? What's this exponent right here? What's the smallest? One. Kind of makes sense because, look, this one is x times x, right? This one is just what? This one is what? That's the only thing they have in common. Just one factor of x. You see that? Okay. It helps sometimes to visualize this way, but you're not going to have time to actually write it out. Just visualize in your mind what you see. I have two factors of x here. I have one here. I have how many here? Four. How many do they have in common? One. Smallest exponent. All right, now the next question is, am I also going to have a factor of y in my GCF? Why am I going to have a factor of y in my GCF? Because they all have y's in it. So I am going to need a factor of y. The question is now, how many do I need? Very good, two. This is how many factors of y? How many factors of y? How many factors of y? What do they have in common? Two. There's your GCF, x, y squared. Okay, number six. All right, now listen carefully, number six. We have 30y cubed, 20y squared. 30y cubed, 20y squared. So again, before we can go to, to the other sections, you have to know how to find the GCF of terms. <coughs> Because the first thing you have to do whenever you factor, you're going to see this when we go to the next one. The first thing you have to do whenever you factor is find the GCF. Step number one, find the GCF. All right, now, I just want to remind you about the word coefficient. You've heard that word before. A coefficient of a term is, is the factor is a number that you multiply the variable by. So if you look at 30y cubed, which one of these is the coefficient? 30. Because I'm saying 30 times y cubed. What's the coefficient here? 20. So the first thing you want to do whenever you have coefficients other than 1, what's the coefficient here? 
One. If there's no number there, it's understood to be a what? One. What's the coefficient here? What's the coefficient here? But when, whenever you have coefficients other than one, you need to determine what the, what the GCF is of those two or more numbers. GCF of 30 and 20. I think you can tell me what it is real quick. Those are numbers small enough to where you can tell me what it is. I thought you could. <laughs> what did you, huh? Nope. She said two. Mm -mm. 10. The greatest common factor of 30 and 20 is 10. Right? 30? The, uh, um, let's go ahead and I can list the, the factors. Let's list the factors. Factors of 30? 1, 30, 2, 15, 3, 10. That's it. Factors of 20 are 1, 20, 2, 10, 4, and 5. That's it. What's the greatest? 10. So if you said 2, I think you need a little bit more practice with this. And, and also what I think you may need to do is actually not very quickly say what you think it is, but actually write it out. Okay? Write it out. So the GCF is what? Of those, what, the GCF the coefficients is what? Ten. 10. So, so far my GCF will be 10 times. Y. Am I going to have a factor Y? Yes. Y. Why? I have one. No, but, but you didn't tell me why. You just said because. <laughs> they both have Y's. They both have Y's. That's what you have to say. They both had Y's in them. How many do I need? Two. Very good. Two. So what's my GCF? 10 y squared. All right, good. Number seven. Number seven. So it's not that bad. 66 y x 30 x squared y. 66 y x 30 x squared y. Look at the coefficients first. What are the coefficients? 66 and 30. All right. Think about what you think the, the GCF of, of 66 and 30 is. You think it's 6? Someone said 6. Oh, 6 is a factor of 30. 6 times 5. Now, you see the kind of... And, and that's okay. I'm glad you did that. So she said 6 is not a factor of 30, but it is because 30 is 6 times what? 5. So, so what I suggest you do at this point, and even on the test, because you have, if you come early, you have plenty of time. Do the factor tree or, or list the factors, whatever you need to do. So look at the factors of 66 are 1 in 66, 2 in what? 33, 3 in what? 32, uh, oh, not 32, 3 in what? 22, right? 22. Um, 11 in 6, what else? It might have been better to use a factor tree on that one. Yeah. <laughs> let's do the let's do the factor tree on this one. Two times what? Thirty-two. Two times what? Sixteen. Two times what? Eight. Eight. Two times four. Two times two. So sixty-six is 2 to what power? 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 power. Okay. Let's do 30. 30? 2 times 30. Oh, doggone it. Okay. Yep. All right. Y'all didn't. Y'all should have stopped me earlier, guys. 
66. 2 times what? 33. 33. 3 and 11. So that's 2 times 3 times 11. Y'all agree? Yeah. Alright. Let's do 30. 2 times what? 3 times what? Alright, so I get 2 times 3 times what? Alright, so the person that said 6 was correct. 2 times what? 2 times 3 is what? 6. Okay, so in my answer, I'm going to say GCF is going to be 6. Alright, do I need to put some Y's? Yeah. How many do I need? 1, very good. Because I have how many factors of y here? One. How many factors of y here? One. I need how many? One. Am I going to have any x's? Yes, because yes, there are x's in both. How many factors of x here? One. one. How many factors of x here? Two. Two. I need how many? One. Just one. So you can say, now, normally we put things alphabetically. So if you put it as 6yx, that's okay. If you put it as 6xy, that's okay as well. Okay? So we'll do more with, with this next class period. Um, but I need, I need for you to, to before Thursday, before Thursday, go ahead and look at that video again, what we just did. Okay? And, all right, so...